Hello, I'm Brian Chakotis, the Area Fisheries Manager for South Central Pennsylvania, and I'd like to welcome everyone to the Inland Reservoir Striped Bass Fisheries presentation. Today I have the pleasure of covering one of the most celebrated and well-known sport fish native to the East Coast, and one that's been widely introduced and maintained in several of Pennsylvania's large reservoirs. Here, the term inland refers to landlocked freshwater populations maintained through Fish and Boat Commission stockings and supplemented by stockings from several dedicated striped bass fishing organizations. A couple of interesting facts about striped bass is that protecting them was the impetus behind America's first conservation law in 1639, when the Massachusetts Bay Colony General Court ruled that they were too valuable a resource to be used as fertilizer to grow squash and corn, and how a tax imposed on their sale created funds for the first public school. Fast forward, and striped bass have the honor of being the state fish in nine Atlantic Coast states extending from New Hampshire to South Carolina. In other words, a lot of people love stripers and striper fishing. So why do anglers love fishing for striped bass? Well, the answer is simple. Striped bass are one of the biggest, most powerful and exciting sport fish to pursue and catch. Their large size and voracious feeding behavior make them challenging to catch and they're great to eat. Pennsylvania state record, pictured here, was caught in 1994 at Racetown Lake in Huntington County and still stands at an incredible 52 pounds and 12 ounces. Neighboring inland state records are just over 47 pounds in Maryland and over 53 pounds in Virginia. The International Game Fish Association's inland record weighed a whopping 69 pounds and 9 ounces and was caught in Alabama's Black Warrior River in 2013. To understand how Pennsylvania's inland striped bass fisheries came to be, we need to go back to the 1950s and 60s when inland striper fisheries first developed and were promoted across the southeastern United States. In South Carolina, the damming of the Santee and Cooper rivers for hydroelectric power and navigation created a large reservoir system that isolated and trapped striped bass behind the new dam, thereby blocking some fish from returning to their coastal saltwater habitat. As a result, striped bass above the dam became landlocked and adapted to a freshwater existence where they were able to reproduce. Around the same time, a second freshwater reservoir fishery developed on the border of Virginia and North Carolina through damming of the Roanoke River to create Kerr Lake. In these new inland reservoirs, striped bass filled new open water niche habitats and utilized abundant gizzard shad and alewife forage. They also complemented existing recreational fisheries. At the same time this was occurring, an active period of reservoir construction was underway that peaked in the 1960s, and state agencies quickly capitalized on opportunities to duplicate the Santee Cooper and Kerr Reservoir experiences. This resulted in hatchery operations ramping up to meet growing demands for more inland striped bass fisheries across the South. It was then that hybrid striped bass were created at a hatchery in South Carolina by crossing striped bass with white bass. By the early 1970s, the wave to create new inland striped bass fisheries reached Pennsylvania when the Army Corps of Engineers completed Raystown Lake and striped bass were first stocked by the Fish and Boat Commission in 1973 with a plan of 20,000 fish. Annual striped bass stockings followed and numbers steadily increased through the 70s, 80s, and 90s as efforts to acquire more fish from southern states intensified to meet growing angler interest as the popularity of striper fishing at Racetown Lake took off. Soon after, the Commission began to expand striped bass and hybrid striped bass stockings to other waters across the Commonwealth having suitable conditions. Striped bass, often called stripers or rockfish, are the largest member of the temperate basses, which include white bass, yellow bass, and white perch. Adult stripers are typically 16 to 40 inches in length and most weighing between 5 and 15 pounds. Females grow to larger sizes and are referred to as cows, while smaller males are called schoolies. In their native coastal range, striped bass occur from Maine to Florida and have been introduced to reservoirs across the U.S., as well as the Pacific Ocean, where they occur from Washington to California. Striped bass are anadromous, living a nearshore coastal existence in fresh and salt water. In freshwater reservoirs, they exhibit seasonal migratory movements to spawn, feed, and locate preferred habitats. They are opportunistic predators feeding on plankton, insects, crustaceans, and fish throughout various life stages. As adults, 
Their diet is mainly fish. Gizzard shad and alewife are the dominant forage supporting Pennsylvania's inland striped bass and hybrid fisheries. As mentioned earlier, hybrid striped bass are a genetic cross between striped bass and white bass that were first produced in South Carolina in the mid-1960s. Hybrids are often called wipers or sunshine bass by anglers. Their lengths range from 20 to 30 inches and they can weigh from 6 to 12 pounds. Like striped bass, they've been widely introduced across the United States to many inland waters. They can tolerate warmer water temperatures than striped bass and this makes them ideal for stocking in smaller impoundments that often provide less thermal relief during summer. Like stripers, hybrids are opportunistic predators feeding on a variety of food items including plankton, insects, crustaceans, and fish. Anglers take advantage of their aggressive feeding behavior when forage fish spawning occurs during late spring. Striped bass, pictured on the left, are identified by their having a slender body shape where the depth of the body is less than one-third its length. They have distinct black stripes extending from behind the gill cover to the tail. Their black stripes are usually continuous but can be slightly interrupted. Hybrid striped bass, pictured on the right, have a deeper or flattened body shape where their depth is more than one-third its length. Hybrids also have black stripes but unlike striped bass, their stripes are usually broken. Striped bass typically occupy the open water areas of the main lake and can often be found from mid-reservoir down lake to the dam, with adults preferring water temperatures between 60 to less than 75 degrees. This results in their usually being suspended within the water column having favorable temperature and dissolved oxygen concentrations. During spring and fall, Stripers exhibit greater movements utilizing the upper areas of a reservoir near the inflow. This can concentrate fish and make them easier for anglers to target. Because striped bass are light sensitive, they prefer deeper water during daylight. During summer, they occupy the cooler waters of the thermocline, usually avoiding water temperatures warmer than 75 degrees. Hybrid striped bass exhibit similar habitat preferences, but tolerate higher water temperatures. This is why they are typically stocked in shallower reservoirs having ample forage. They also utilize nearshore habitats, including islands and coves, as well as the open areas of the main lake. The Fish and Boat Commission manages 12 inland reservoirs for striped bass and hybrid striped bass fishing. In western Pennsylvania, Shenango River Lake in Mercer County north of Hermitage and Lake Arthur in Butler County's Moraine State Park offer excellent opportunities for hybrids. In central Pennsylvania, Racetown Lake in Huntington County is the largest reservoir within Pennsylvania's border. This 8,300-acre Army Corps impoundment supports an excellent striper fishery and receives supplemental stockings from several dedicated fishing organizations. In south central Pennsylvania, Pincho Lake, Lake Marburg, and Lake Redmond are in York County and a short drive from the greater Harrisburg, Lancaster, and York region. Pinchot Lake, an established hybrid fishery, and Lake Marburg, a developing striper fishery, are state park waters, while Lake Redmond is a water supply reservoir. To their east is Blue Marsh Lake, an Army Corps impoundment in Berks County north of Redding, and Lake Nockamixon, a state park water in Bucks County east of Quakertown. Both have stripers and hybrids. In the northeast, there is Beltsville Lake, an Army Corps reservoir in Carbon County, east of Lehighton, and Lake Wallenpompak, Pennsylvania's second largest inland water, bordering Pike and Wayne counties, east of the scranton wilkes area. Both support excellent fisheries. To their west and north are Cowanesque Lake and Hammond Lake, two Army Corps reservoirs in Tioga County, near Pennsylvania's border with New York. This graph shows Pennsylvania's 12 inland fisheries by lake size from largest to smallest. As mentioned earlier, Racetown Lake in Huntington County at 8,300 acres and Lake Wallenpompak bordering Pike and Wayne counties at 5,700 acres are Pennsylvania's two largest inland striper fisheries. Lake Redmond at 290 acres and Pinchot Lake at 340 acres, both in York County, are Pennsylvania's smallest fisheries. The management objectives for our striper and hybrid fisheries 
are to create robust, targeted recreational fisheries, maintain populations through stocking that includes working with other state agencies, commercial hatcheries, and angling groups like the Pennsylvania Striped Bass Association and the Keystone Striper Club to support supplemental stocking efforts while the Fish and Boat Commission explores hatchery operations to enhance fish survival through pond raising of fingerlings to larger sizes before stocking, regulate angler harvest to manage exploitation, and work to preserve and enhance essential habitats by working with dam owners to ensure operations maintain healthy populations for supporting our recreational fisheries, and periodic assessment of populations, including angler use and harvest studies to gauge management and fishery use. Where do Pennsylvania striped bass and hybrids come from? The Fish and Boat Commission acquires surplus production from fish and wildlife agencies outside Pennsylvania or purchases commercially raised fish to support in-state stocking. Typically, striped bass fry are raised in grow-out ponds for stocking as fingerlings that measure one to two inches in length by late spring or early summer. In 2020, the Commission experimentally held and raised some hybrid striped bass in grow-out ponds to larger sizes for stocking in fall to enhance survival and improve their odds of entering the adult fishery. From 2010 through 2020, the Fish and Boat Commission stocked an average of a little over 239,000 striped bass and over 93,000 hybrids per year. This equated to fish stocking rates of approximately 10 stripers and 4 hybrids per acre. Striped bass fry, which are not included in the figure, averaged nearly 3 million per year from 2010 through 2013 but have since been replaced by fingerling plants as a more productive stocking strategy. Angling regulations for striped bass and hybrid striped bass consist of a year-round open season and a minimum size limit of 20 inches. The daily creole limit is two fish combined. Pictured are successful anglers from Racetown Lake. Unique to several inland striped bass waters is bait fish collection which is permitted on several reservoirs and requires a PFBC issued permit to allow use of cast nets or throw nets by anglers for taking gizzard shad and alewife only. Permits are water specific and gizzard shad must be less than or equal to eight inches in length and a 50 fish limit. Cast net dimensions are limited to a maximum radius of 10 feet or diameter of 20 feet and a minimum mesh size of 3 8 inches. Under the permit, anglers are permitted to use bait fish only in the waters from which they are collected. This requirement is in place to prevent unwanted introductions of gizzard shad, alewife, or other species into other waters. The executive director has determined that the commission will issue cast net permits only for the waters listed. Biologists periodically assess populations to index the relative abundance of striped bass and hybrids. This graph shows the length frequency distribution of striped bass collected at Racetown Lake in 2016. Here, the lengths of fish captured range from 18 to 39 inches, with the greatest number measuring from 26 to 33 inches in length. Age analysis indicated that most stripers within this range were six-year-old individuals, originating from stocking that occurred in 2010. Lower numbers of smaller and larger fish show gear selectivity affecting the catchability of these fish that was influenced by the size of nets used during the survey. Here, Lake Wallam Palm Pack survey results from 2014 show the catch of 79 striped bass and 15 hybrids. Striped bass range from 10 to 37 inches and hybrids range from 24 to 27 inches in length. The longest striped bass captured weighed almost 20 pounds. Age and growth analysis revealed stock stripers reached legal length by the end of their fourth growing season in Lake Wallen Palm Pack. The trophy fish pictured on the right was recently caught and released by an ice angler. At Lake Arthur, hybrid striped bass are routinely captured in trap nets during muscalunge monitoring surveys that were conducted in 2011, 14, and 16. Overall, 187 hybrids were captured ranging from 4 to 28 inches in length. The catches of hybrid striped bass at Lake Arthur show an exceptional fishery, especially when one considers hybrids 
weren't the primary species targeted during these surveys. On average, striped bass grow to reach the legal minimum length of 20 inches in five years and attain larger sizes and older ages. Hybrids grow faster, reaching 20 inches by the age four, but are shorter lived. The length at age chart shows the long black line representing striped bass, and the dashed line immediately below is hybrid length at age. The two remaining dashed lines depict white bass and white perch. Through angle use and harvest studies, we've learned that striped bass exhibit the highest angler catch rates during October. Hybrid catch rates are higher in April and correspond with anglers keying in on rising water temperatures and forage spawning activity on the lake surface, mostly during evening and nighttime hours. During these best seasons, anglers can anticipate catching a fish within a couple hours of fishing activity. The best time to fish is at night, overlapping the dusk and dawn periods. Because adult stripers and hybrids feed almost exclusively on gizzard shad and alewife, anglers are encouraged to learn more about their behaviors to become more successful. Boat anglers use a variety of methods including drifting live bait, trolling plugs, and jigging bucktails, or casting topwater surface lures when stripers are feeding near the surface. Try to match your lure or bait size to the size of bait fish present. And remember to listen for surface feeding activity when night fishing. And use binoculars to scan the surface to find fish feeding during the day. Target the spring and fall seasons when water temperatures are rising and falling through the 60s. During summer, concentrate your fishing activities mid-lake to the dam, as stripers prefer the cooler, deeper water of the lower reservoir. Striper anglers are encouraged to practice conservation and avoid repeated catch and release fishing during summer, since hooking mortality increases with rising water temperatures. If you're targeting stripers to eat, switch to other tasty sport fish like white perch that are plentiful and easy to catch after limiting out. And if not already doing so, use circle hooks when fishing with bait to reduce mortality associated with catch and release fishing. This concludes the Inland Reservoir Striped Bass Fisheries presentation. Please submit questions in written form to the panel as instructed. And thank you for your attention and interest.